what we're going to talk about will be uh, green and gray infrastructure. So um, this information, for example, that you see on the screen right now is one of the most common, if not the most common uh, visual benchmark of climate change. Uh, more commonly, that would be uh, advisories from uh, Pagasa. No? Binanggit ito kanina ni Francis. And normally what we associate with uh, climatic events particularly would be typhoons for the Philippines. Of course, there are still a lot of other events uh, or climatic events. These are extreme weather events that we refer to. But of course, there are still other events no? like uh, storm surges or sea level rise. As you've seen, um, if we do not make any changes with our practices, we're looking at a two-degree uh, future, for example, and that there would be even uh, a worse impact uh, for more people, for example, if we are uh, projecting a four-degree uh, future. As I've mentioned, climate change and uh, the Department of Defense, the U.S. Department of Defense has referred to it as a threat multiplier. Uh, and we see this not only in terms of typhoons, but that there are other uh, events that we will associate with this. No? In a research uh, recently uh, that was published by CNN, uh, in fact, they uh, shared that uh, beyond sea level rise, for example, you've probably heard of storm surges. Uh, and these are only two of the issues that we'd probably be facing in the Philippines. No? Uh, as I mentioned, climate change is a threat multiplier. That means it actually exacerbates or makes uh, events that we experience, disasters, as mentioned by Francis earlier. Uh, climate change actually makes it worse. We've had typhoons before. Uh, architect Yumang actually referred to our history, for example, of uh, typhoons, even way back, no? uh, probably beyond uh, the time when uh, serious or strict uh, documentation of these events were even a, a, a conscious effort. Uh, meron na tayong uh, mga bagyo. No? Uh, as a young child, for example, I've known or I've usually uh, experienced or seen typhoons uh, that we probably re that will probably have covered the entire alphabet. Uh, the Filipino alphabet, for example, meron at meron tayong pangalan mula simula hanggang dulo. And that has been there uh, for the longest time. What has not been uh, seen before is the level of intensity that we've encountered uh, for typhoons. And with the intensity or the increasing intensity of typhoons, we have, for example, as, uh, as the years have gone by, we've seen that uh, storm surges, for example, have gone beyond what we've normally experienced. No? Habang tumatagal, nakikita natin na mas uh, malayo na kuminsan yung naabot ng mga uh, storm surges. Idagdag mo dyan yung issue, for example, of uh, rather uh, the question of, say, land subsidence. And then if you have natural tidal changes, if it so happens that a typhoon occurs, uh, when the tide is high, when land subsidence occurs, uh, storm surges normally would become worse. So you have all these things, it will be a perfect uh, storm, for example. But beyond what, uh, what was also shared, uh, next slide, please. From a climate lens, how do we look at addressing these issues more broadly? Siguro, among the members, uh, once or twice you've encountered these uh, terms. No? Uh, when we refer to ecosystem-based adaptation, we're actually looking at biodiversity and ecosystem services no? uh, as part of an overall adaptation scheme. No? Um, Nature-based solutions and natural climate solutions actually uh, refer generally to uh, similar climate uh, solutions. No? Natural climate solutions actually emphasize more the aspect of mitigation. These are activities that actually increase the level of mitigation from nature and may include uh, parts of adaptation. 
it's part of benefits. No? When we speak of climate change, normally we associate it with what is referred to as co-benefits, no? mitigation and adaptation working together to reduce, for example, the emissions. At the same time, if we are unable to uh, minimize the impact, then we have to adapt. Kailangan nating gawan ng paraan. The expression normally we associate with this is kung maikli ang uh, kubot, mamaluktot. No? And probably that would be appropriate in terms of referring to adaptation from a Filipino perspective. Um, examples of this in the next slide, you'll see some of the solutions uh, that, uh, that are or that have been identified. You have here, for example, uh, reforestation. You'd probably not associate it to, let's say, design of a single structure of in or infrastructure uh, generally. But this looks at the environment where you intend to, say, set up, install, or construct uh, any edifice or building. Um, these are largely what we consider as methods that would help us uh, reduce emissions, for example, as well as allow us to adapt to the impacts of climate change. Avoided deforestation or degradation or restoration of degraded land simply means that uh, we try to uh, minimize, for example, the need to extract resources from the forest. Normally, this would be in the form of cut down, uh, cutting down trees and the consequences that come with them. Res restoration of mangroves and coastal ecosystems uh, is another example that we uh, normally have already associated with how we can reduce the impact that we have on the environment. Mangroves, for example, for the Philippines, the consideration there would be the fact that we have one of the longest coastlines being an uh, archipelagic country. We have that advantage, for example, of having uh, a large amount of space for which we can uh, replant appropriate species of mangroves. Peatlands, uh, not, to, not in the same extent as, say, Indonesia or Malaysia. But the problem, for example, that Malaysia and Indonesia have encountered is the fact that even their peatlands have been uh, deforested uh, to give way, for example, to uh, uh, what you refer to as uh, planting of uh, palm oil uh, because of uh, global uh, demand for it. Cropland nutrient management refers to um, largely maintaining the amount of nitrogen that helps or that is, act, that is commonly an ingredient in, in uh, fertilizers uh, to increase productivity of the land. But the problem with that is uh, increase in nitrogen uh, on land. Uh, if it leaches, for example, in rivers, uh, you eventually uh, have nitrogen uh, in the amounts that we put on land going to uh, open uh, open water, oceans, seas, for example, and eventually create uh, algal bloom. So going to uh, illustrative examples of all these natural climate solutions. Uh, next slide, please. This is probably something that you've already seen. And when we refer to green gray infrastructure, it is not necessarily a departure from what we refer to as natural climate solutions or ecosystem-based adaptation. But what you do now uh, have before you would be a combination of, say, conservation and restoration of ecosystems uh, with uh, the gray. Um, approaches or engineering approaches no? that you would normally associate with, say, solutions that have been uh, adapted in order to minimize the impacts uh, or to adapt to the impacts from climate change. No? So, ito yung kadalasan na kita natin na uh, seawall, etc. No? Pero sa examples na papakita ko sa inyo as an, as an elaboration of all those we've enumerated earlier, uh, Ito yun, no? halimbawa, normally when you have bodies of water, particularly in, say, urban areas, uh, because of the amount of uh, concrete uh, 
uh, as a car architect, you may also refer to the amount of concrete that we use in terms of uh, the development that we normally associate with that urbanization, for example. It has to be a concrete jungle. No? But this freshwater green gray infrastructure solution actually allows what you refer to as hydrologic function. No? Yung hydrologic function can come in, for example, when you uh, create or, or restore a floodplain uh, and that you have uh, potential seasonally flooded farmlands that because of a terrace or a levee that you create allows the water to go down uh, bodies of water, no? streams or rivers. No? Uh, next slide, please. You also have, and the two uh, ensuing slides would be largely on coastal green gray infrastructure. And with uh, green gray infrastructure for coastal areas, of course, this is where uh, concerned mangroves come in. Yeah. As we all know, mangroves have already been uh, identified as, a, as an adaptation measure. No? What does it do? You have storm surges, mangroves generally are able to buttress the impact of uh, of storm surges, no uh, areas, for example, where there are uh, uh, communities already benefit from mangroves uh, protecting them, uh, and then of course, <clears throat> and then of course you have breakwaters to also uh, allow the reduction and uh, of uh, of wave energy. No? There's also rainwater harvesting earlier uh, seen. And uh, in summary, it's simply referred to as climate change science. No? Climate adaptation and mitigation will always be things that you now have to consider in how you plan and develop your, your, your uh, design. No? Change, it will always be there. No? So what may have been applicable currently will always have to be under review, assessed, determined whether this will work uh, in the future, as well as lastly, science is something both now natural and social sciences. You know, how, social sciences in the context of how people relate to one another. Um, during the pandemic, one of the critical uh, Inadequacies, for example, of cities in urban areas would be the absence of parks, for example, so the absence of bike lanes. No? Uh, natural science also, again, in the matter by in the manner by which you're able to uh, predict how much impact no? the categories of typhoons, for example, are able to help us decide what kind of structures should be put in place in particular areas, and. We've seen, for example, that we that if we don't uh, follow what nature presents to us as limitations of how we develop these things, we end up being affected in the long run. No? So uh, that basically summarizes the presentation. Uh, Marky, thank again, thank you very much, much. Shane, uh, back to you.